When you said draw it on the ground, you were serious. Yeah, we literally draw it out completely full scale on the ground. Because that way you can double check everything. How'd you do that? Uh, being stupid. Cutting a piece of metal, and it caught it, spun it inside my hand, a piece of stainless steel, and turned it into a razor blade, pretty much. Ooh. Safety first. Post it notes strategically taped together, as you can see. Labeled. Ready to go. Uh, got a readout on it there, but it's got levels on it, so basically we can set it on level, pick the degree we want, the angle of the roll cage to follow, and it gives us a number to use for our geometry in the roll cage. Works out pretty well. The end of the first real day. It's on clamps. Looking good. Isn't that right? Yeah. I brought the E46 here to get a roll cage in it and um, it's gonna be totally custom and we're doing it right now. So first thing I did was grind the areas where the cage was actually gonna be welded into the car while Russell made some templates for the brackets to weld the cage to. Then Russell went into the car and made measurements on where the roof goes up and down because it's a convertible just to make sure that the cage isn't going to get in the way of the motion of the top. And then we bent the steel, we cut it, tacked it in place, and right now Russell's welding it all together, and after today all we should have to do is paint the thing. You guys have seen it in the background of a lot of our videos and asked about it. So I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of my E46 drift car. So from the outside, it looks pretty normal. Just a lowered E46 325i convertible with BBS, three piece. Now, when I bought the car, it was an automatic and was lowered with the wheels and already had the M3 hood and the M3 style bumper. And it wasn't this messed up, but it's my first drift car and my first drift event, you know, it goes down. But when things really get interesting in this car is when I take the top down. Obviously the first thing, the video you just watched, that's the custom cage right there, done by my good friend Russell at Garage 52. He makes the sweetest stuff. He's also the one that sold me this car actually. And uh, I saw his cars, so I knew that I could do it because this is the first thing I ever did. Literally, I'd never changed my oil before. This came as an automatic and I swapped it to a five speed. So 
It took me a really long time to do it, and I messed up a lot. And uh, right before my first drift event, Russell actually helped me redo my clutch correctly. Besides the cage, obviously a lot of weight reduction and um, open cords and ugliness that I'm going to work on eventually. We'll open the hood. Still stock engine, not turboed yet or anything like that. Um, just some, just cleaned up my engine bay a little bit. I took out the air conditioner because it's a convertible, so I don't see the point in that. Um, took out the fluid reservoir for the window spray thing. Um, this air intake was already on there. I'm trying to find a better solution for that. So if you guys know a good air intake solution for an E46 that actually helps or at least doesn't hurt, I, I would have kept it stock if it came stock, but yeah. And that is where the E46 is at in life right now. Um, I, I definitely want to wide body it. I want to put deeper dish wheels on it. <laughs> I don't know, I just really want to make it look good before I make it like super powerful or anything because I'm not good at drifting yet and there's not a lot of drifting events around here for me to practice anyways. So I'll make it look good before I make it go fast. That's my rough plan right now. All right, this is a little bonus part of the video. So this is my girlfriend, Mariella. <laughs> And she's basically never driven before. I have. She, yeah, she has. She grew up in Buenos Aires yeah. City, didn't drive. I mean, she's driven a few times, a handful of times. So, and she certainly has never driven anything like this or put on a racing harness. So, if you guys want to stick around and watch this, I'll try to get her to do a burnout by the end of the night. <laughs> All right, girl. All right, so you take, first you take these two here and then you put it through that one. Yeah, like that. And then you put it through there. And then when you pull this clip all the way back, that hook comes out and then push it all the way in until it clicks. All right, you know how to start it? You gotta hold the clutch in. Oh, oh shit. Nice. We're in first. There you go. Oh, shoot. Someone's coming. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> you can go easy on it. Just get used to it. Yeah. Hey. Oh, so smooth. I know. It's a brand new clutch. All right. It's about time for third, girl. Yeah, don't tell me. Okay. I know. Okay. So how many times have you driven a vehicle in your life? Like a car, mopeds don't count. Probably this is the sixth time I've tried. The sixth time ever? Probably. Well, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> you're going pretty slow, but my speedometer doesn't work, so. <laughs> oh. You wouldn't know that. There you go, girl. Yeah, there's fourth. So what do you think so far? Awesome. Like quick, just like flick it off. Oh, uh, okay. Like you want it to be instantly off because you want the tires to instantly grip and that's why they spin. Yeah, girl. <laughs> there you go. Look, you're leaving some smoke back there. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> it's it's a low car. Oh shoot! Did I break it? No, no it's oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> you just kind of have to go into the driveway a little sideways. Like, if there's a bump, you have to hit it diagonally, so that way there's less, there's more ground clearance diagonally than just straight over. Just in case you were wondering how the pros do it. I was talking to the camera, I said, just in case you were wondering how the pros do it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call me a pro. I, I do it. <laughs> Judging by your work over here, I'd consider you a pro. 